Hey guys, Mike with Long Range with the Lilies. Uh, here today, this week, to talk about workflow. We have the uh, Arizona NRL Hunter match put on by Mark Bean and uh, Josh Reeves just around the corner. Uh, it's the first NRL Hunter match of the year. I'm super excited for it. So we're going to get this out right in front of that so you guys have something to kind of think about as you're progressing through their match. I'm sure it's going to be great. We wish we could be there. It was just not in the cards this year. Um, so workflow, especially with regards to the NRL Hunter. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of good workflow and then some examples of bad workflow. Uh, the example of good workflow is other people. The examples of bad workflow is Keely and myself. Um, she's not here, so I can get away with critiquing her, and I guess I'll just suffer the consequences for that later. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So uh, what we are at here to set the tone is the NRL um, Hunter match in Price, Utah, the Dock Steel Challenge. A super tough hunter match, uh, especially finding targets was kind of the, the hardest part of the match. The targets I felt were generally fair and most people were hitting targets provided they could find them. Um, there was a little bit of movement uh, in this match, but not as much as I've seen at other matches where you're starting the clock, you know, 30, 40, 50 yards away from your, your shooting position. This one, you were kind of within 10 to 20 yards all the time, so it was relatively quick but it still necessitated good workflow. So what is workflow? Well, workflow is the processes that you take in order to uh, set yourself up to find targets, range them, and engage them. Um, and what we're gonna focus on now is the workflow it takes from the minute the buzzer starts until you are on glass looking at targets. All right, here we go, we'll get right into it. So first up, there's the buzzer and coming into frame is my man Brady Allison. Okay, so he sets his rifle down. As you can see here, um, he sets his pack down, gets his tripod out. And then one of the things that I like about Brady here is he's setting the tripod out, but his eyes are focused down range. Uh, he's looking down range for obvious targets while he's setting up. Okay, he's got his tripod set up, reaches down for his bag, sets it up. And he's on glass, and we'll pause it here at 32 seconds, roughly. Um, so not bad, right? So you have four minutes to find range, engage your, your target. So he's already eaten 32 seconds of it. But he, in my opinion, he has a good workflow. So this is a great opportunity for me to put in my caveat of I am not uh, a world-renowned instructor. I'm not a uh, NRL hunting champion. Um, these are just some things that I've noticed from a outsider point looking in, uh, mostly from analyzing Keely and my workflow, but we'll get into that. Okay, so we're gonna hit play again on Brady. Uh, he's looking for targets there, and um, so we're moving on. So the next shooter we have coming up right now is another example of good workflow, Philip Vallejo from Modern Day Sniper. So Phil runs up, puts his rifle down, breaks out his tripod as well, which was kind of a, a theme with this match. And then Phil has a pretty efficient workflow as well. He knows where everything is. He's constantly looking down range to find targets. And what Phil does here that's interesting that most people don't is, and here we go. So he's on glass at 27 seconds. That's extremely fast. Um, that uh, My goal is always to be right around the 30 second mark. That leaves me three minutes and 30 seconds to find range and engage. Um, so you'll notice here Phil is using his rangefinder to spot targets. So this is a Vectronix uh, Terrapin X. It's got an 8 power um, lens in it, so it does have a little bit of magnification. And he's using that as a step to where if he can find him with his rangefinder, he doesn't have to transition between binos and a rangefinder. He's already finding it in a rangefinder. Obviously the rangefinder isn't as good as binos, so he's sacrificing there but clearly he felt comfortable doing that. And at 27 seconds, he was on glass pretty quick. Um, now, we're gonna hit play on this uh, and Phil's glassing. So I'm gonna talk about our next person up. So our next person up, uh, pausing right there, is Keely. So Keely's starting a little closer on this stage. Uh, she doesn't have to run up and we're gonna analyze her workflow. Um, if you see this video after this video comes out, and after I critique Keely, I didn't kill myself. I just want to put that out there. Uh, this is kind of my cry for help. Anyway, so here's Keely. 
So Keely sets her rifle down, gets her pack off, and breaks out her tripod. Um, so all pretty normal. She's also scanning down range, which I really like. I see a lot of guys that just stare at the ground and they don't look up and try and scan uh, for targets. So that's really good. So one of the things I noticed immediately is um, Keely's kind of unfamiliar with what height she wants this tripod at. She adjusts it several times, either too hot, tall, and then she'll adjust it. She'll move it around, reposition it. What you want is to be able to extend that tripod, have it at the exact right height, set it down, and it's good to go. All these little micro movements eat up time. So she's got her bag down, she's got her binoculars out, uh, adjusts her cap, and then 51 seconds, she's on glass. So she's already sacrificed almost 20 seconds from Phil's time or um, Brady's time. And well, what is 20 seconds? So when I analyze my times, I have a couple time standards that I practice and I train. Uh, a lot of these were developed from the the raft, uh, uh, the excuse me, the craft rifle challenge. Um, so I have found in order to efficiently build and take a good shot, takes me roughly 11 to 12 seconds. Um, any shorter than that, and I'm kind of rushing a little bit. Uh, any longer than that is just kind of extra wasted time. Um, so 20 seconds is easily a building up an entirely new position, finding the target in your scope and, and, and hitting the target. So I've also found for follow-up shots, I need about four seconds. Uh, that's breaking the shot, time of flight of the bullet, watching the splash, analyzing the splash, running the bolt, making a correction and breaking another good shot. If I try to do it any faster than that, the wheels tend to come off, I don't tend to break good shots, I tend to rush, or worse, I'm not analyzing the shot, which is the, the subject that I tend to cut out first. If I'm in a hurry, I don't analyze the shot before, I'm just trying to get rounds in the air, and that's not a good plan. Um, so, 51 seconds is less than ideal, it's something that Keely is working on uh, every day. I also want to point out that here in this video, she's up on her elbows looking through the binos instead of putting the binos on the bag. That is easily less stable. She does have her elbows on the tack table, which helps a little bit. I do see a lot of guys freehanding their binos, um, and I think that's a mistake. You're not as stable, and if you're trying to get a range, that little reticle is bouncing up and down, and you're very likely to get a, a bad range when you do that. So 51 seconds for Keely. Um, all right, so what we're going to do now is, uh, pausing it here for me while I explain it, this now is me at the NRL Hunter match in Idaho. This is the first NRL Hunter match Keely and I had ever shot, so we were figuring some stuff out and maybe not as efficient as we'd like to be, but it makes for some really good teaching points. So here we go, here's me. Okay, so we start the clock, I got to run down some terrain and, and try not to trip and fall over all these little rocks and boulders. Um, here the position was marked on a rock, so I didn't need to set up my table at all or my tripod. I could just break out my bag, go straight to the rock, and set up on glass. So here I am getting settled, trying not to flag myself with my rifle, setting up my binos, and 25 seconds there on glass. So still not bad. I had a little bit of movement. Um, you know, it was fairly easy to set up. There were only a couple real obvious spots to put my stuff. Uh, one of the tips I want to pass to you guys is as you're running up to the stage, be analyzing where you want to set up. Um, you are generally given a sighting stake and then two left and right limits. You want to be as close to that sighting point or directly over that sighting point as possible. Uh, and there's a very good reason for that and we'll get into that here in just a minute. All right, so here's another stage um, where I had kind of a long run up. I'm already at 15 seconds before I even start to, to take my bag off, so I'm eating up some time there. So this stage did not go well and there's a bunch of reasons for it. So I set up my tripod and as you can see, there's a rise in front of me, a hill that uh, will come into play here in just a little bit. I can't quite see as well as I would like to. So I put my bag down, I get on glass, 37 seconds, which isn't bad considering the long run up, and I start searching. One of the things I want to point out here is I'm probably a good two to three feet left of the sighting point. I am not directly over the sighting point at all. So I'm searching, and the only thing I'm seeing is stuff that's 
well outside of the engagement distance range. So now I come up, I'm freehanding my binos. Again, I, I recommend entirely against this. And at some point here shortly, you're gonna see I give up on it and realize I need to extend my tripod. So I extend my tripod and you notice I set it up again and I'm still not over the sighting point. Back on glass, a minute and 20 seconds has gone by. Okay, so I'm asking to make sure I'm looking at the right number and I realize that I'm not over the sighting point and instead of moving my tripod, I go back to freehanding, which I've already found out once is a terrible idea. Okay, so I start asking the questions to the RO that most people ask when they're in a panic and they can't find their targets. Okay, so I found the first target and now I'm looking for the second target. Still not finding it. All right, I want to pause here. I know I sped it up, but I'd like to point out the gentleman in the gray shirt. That's my good friend, Seth Howard, who is the devious jerk who hid this second target. Anyway, moving on. I'm clearly not over it. So speeding it up just for the sake of time, you can see I do eventually move the tripod over the sighting point to start looking, which is where I should have been in the first place. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna slow it down um, and I'll show you the timestamp here. So I'm clearly frustrated. I'm at two minutes and 45 seconds right now out of a four minute stage. So I'm already well down on time to make any sort of engagements. There's only two targets on this stage that you have to shoot from two positions. So roughly the three minute mark here. You have. You have one, one minute, minute left. So roughly the three minute mark here, I do what I should have did a little while ago. I abandoned trying to find the second target and I just need to engage the first target for um, the points that I can get. It is far better, even if you only find one target, to get some points as opposed to none. All right, so here we are. Three minutes and 25 seconds. Three minutes and 30 seconds. First shot at 3.32. And obviously I missed it. So I do get it on the second follow-up shot, but way too long. So I just wanted to show you those two examples. Those are both examples of what I would call like kind of poor workflow. Um, the first one, you know, coming down over the rocks, I could have been a lot more efficient in where I placed my stuff, but this one was definitely an example of what not to do. So now how I want to end the video is by going over uh, an example of what I would call really, really efficient workflow. Um, I analyzed this video a bunch. I'm trying to emulate how this person does their workflow, um, obviously with some differences, but you can see here just how efficient this person is. So we'll get into it. So this is Kalen Wojcik, also of Modern Day Sniper. Um, no stranger to you know finding targets and competition dynamics and other stuff. So you see he sets down his stuff and every chance he gets, his eyes are just fixed down range. He's kind of looking around bushes, he's moving around trees. He is not looking at his tripod at all because he's so comfortable setting it up without having to look at it. So he sets it down, gets his bag on there and gets on glass. And here we are, sorry, pause it there. So 26 seconds later, 26 seconds from start to finish on glass from a standing position. So guys, I just wanted to go over some workflow for you. If you're headed to an NRL match, a big thing is think about your workflow. Think about how you're gonna set up. Think about how you're gonna organize your pack for the things you need, your range finder, your binos, your bag, your tripod. How are you gonna arrange those things to where it's most efficient for you? And just like dry fire practice, you can practice doing this at home. Um, now, not all stages are gonna require tripods. I kind of view tripods, setting up a tripod as the most time invasive way you can do it. Um, I'm a much bigger fan of like just running up to a rock and slapping down a bag. But again, as you're running up to the stage, analyze where you're setting it up. Not all observing positions are created equal. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you guys. I wish you guys great luck out there in the NRL Hunter matches. And if you like what you see, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and hit us up with comments. We always love watching it. Again, not an instructor at all. I'm just trying to pass some of the lessons that we've learned. And uh, again, I can always be used as an example of what not to do. So looking forward to seeing you guys out there real soon.